Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Nina's Academy. So guys, in this video, we are going to learn about the governing of the Pelton wheel turbine. What is the need of the governing? What is the exact meaning of the governing of the Pelton wheel turbine? And why it is carried out? So guys, over here, in this video, we are going to learn everything about the governing of the Pelton wheel turbine. So guys, if you are new over here on my educational channel, Engineers Academy, kindly subscribe it because your subscription really motivates me to make more of such educational videos. And please press the bell icon. So whenever I upload a new educational informative video, you will get instant notification. So without wasting any time, let's begin with our today's topic that is nothing but the governing of Pelton wheel turbine. So guys, first of all, let us understand what is the exact meaning of the governing and why do we need to govern the turbines? So guys, as we all know, these hydraulic turbines are the hydraulic machines that convert the hydraulic energy into the mechanical energy. And then this particular mechanical energy is then later converted into the electrical energy by the means of generator. This generator is coupled to the turbine. So over here, this generator produces the electricity in terms of the different frequency. The frequency of the electric current which is produced by the generator is purely depends upon the speed of the generator and the speed of the turbine rotor. If there is there is any kind of like a deviation, like increase or decrease in the speed of the turbine, it will ultimately affects the current output or as the electricity the frequency of the electricity so basically it is you know very much necessary to maintain a constant speed of the turbine in order to maintain a constant frequency of electricity so how to maintain a constant speed of the hydraulic turbine so first of all we have to understand that the speed of the turbine depends upon two parameters that is nothing but the driving torque and the resisting torque the driving torque will be the amount of the fluid which is flowing on that of the uh, bucket of the Pelton wheel or else on the blades of the turbine. So this uh, driving torque will be purely depends upon the amount of the fluid is flowing through that particular turbine. The resisting torque on the opposite hand, resisting torque will be the electrical load. The electrical load will increase or decrease that will ultimately affects the resisting torque and we need to balance in between this driving torque and the resisting torque in order to maintain a constant speed of the turbine when there is any kind of change in the electrical load like the it the electrical load may increase as per the demand or else it may reduce so if there is any change in the electrical load it will ultimately affect the driving torque it will ultimately affect the speed of the turbine the speed of the turbine may be increase or decrease depends upon the electrical load so it is very much necessary to maintain a balance and to maintain a constant angular speed of the rotor of the turbine when there is any change in the electrical load that is the electrical load may be increased that is depends upon the requirement or it may be increased or it may be reduced so this affects the angular speed of the rotor and ultimately if the load on on the turbine gets increased the speed of the turbine will get reduced so at that particular point the turbine won't run at its uh, desired angular speed and it won't produce the maximum efficiency the ultimate output in terms of the electricity that is the frequency of the electricity will get affected so in order to reduce that effect on the output we need to maintain the constant angular speed of the turbine rotor we need to govern the turbine at a constant speed so guys this is nothing but the need of governing of the turbine so guys in order to govern the uh, angular speed of the Pelton wheel turbine the oil pressure governor is used so over here this in this particular image you can see this uh, overall representation of the oil pressure governor this particular oil pressure governor consists of oil sump the oil pump is then connected to the oil sump, servo motor or relay cylinder, control valve, distribution valve or relay valve, centrifugal governor or pendulum, different types of the piping arrangements, the spear rod and the needle. So guys, now let's talk about the construction of this oil pressure governor. So when a particular turbine runs at a constant speed, this uh, the oil pressure governor is remained standstill in such a way that over here, this particular oil pressure governor will be having a centrifugal governor at the top. Over here, you can see this centrifugal governor. 
it is having a two balls which is connected to a sleeve this particular sleeve is connected to the lever arm the lever arm is pivoted at a fulcrum and the end of the lever arm is connected to the control cylinder in in this particular control cylinder there are two openings and one input so the two openings are v1 and v2 over here in this particular control cylinder over here these are the two pistons this particular pistons you know controls the openings of this v1 and v2 uh, respectively this two openings of this control valve is further connected to the relay cylinder or we can call it as a master cylinder over here in this relay cylinders there will be two inputs and uh, over here the cylinder piston assembly is there in such a way that the piston rod is connected to the spur and this particular spur will be you know will be inserted in the nozzle of the pelton wheel turbine as we have no this particular nozzle the flow of of the you know flow of the fluid will gets coming from this particular nozzle the spur will be inserted in this particular nozzle in such a way that the movement of the spur will control the opening area and ultimately it will control the flow rate of the fluid so first of all at this uh, constant speed the spur will be at a constant level so when the speed of the turbine is constant then there is no need of the governing of the turbine but if we talk about the two conditions the first in which the speed of the turbine like uh, or as the load on the turbine increases and the second case in which the load on the turbine decreases now let's talk about this first case that is when the load on the turbine gets increased when the load on the turbine increases the rotor will rotate at the lesser speed the speed of the rotor will get reduced so over here this particular centrifugal governor is connected to the uh, like the rotor arm the speed of this uh, centrifugal governor will also get affected in such a way that this two balls the distance between two balls will get reduced cuz the speed is very much less so in this case the two balls are will coming towards each other will result in the movement of the sleeve the sleeve will come in downward direction so over here the there will be the upward movement of this lever arm so at the end of the lever arm there will be the upward movement so due to the this particular upward movement of the lever arm the valve v1 gets opened and the oil is pumped through a oil sump the hydraulic oil gets inserted from that particular v1 into the relay cylinder and this will push the piston towards the uh, left side so the spur will move backwards so that it will increase the flow area in that particular nozzle and the more amount of the liquid will flow into this uh, uh, turbine blades so over here the flow rate will increase and the more flow rate results in the increase of the speed of the turbine so when the load on the turbine increases this particular governor helps us to improve the speed of the turbine or to bring that particular turbine at the maximum desirable speed now let's take the second scenario in which the load on the turbine decreases when the load on the turbine decreases ultimately the speed of the turbine will gets increased and in order to bring that particular speed of the turbine to the normal speed it means over here we need to reduce the speed of the turbine so over here in this particular scenario this uh, two centrifugal governor like this particular two balls will move further away from each other the sleeve will move upwards that will results in the downward downward movement of this uh, downward movement of this particular lever arm that will results in the opening of the uh, this uh, valve v2 so valve v1 will remains closed whereas valve v2 gets open here over here in the this particular control uh, control valve so the valve v2 gets opened and the oil gets pumped through that uh, particular oil sump into from this particular v2 and it will move into this uh, uh, relay cylinder and then this pressurized oil due to this particular pressurized oil the uh, the piston will move towards the right side and then this particular spur will gets in inserted into the nozzle and it will reduce the area and it will affect the flow rate like there will be uh, less fluid will get inserted there will be less fluid will get entered in the turbine so it will reduces the speed of the turbine ultimately the load on the turbine decreases 
the speed of the turbine will also decreases over here so, so this is how the governor governs the speed of the turbine and it allows the turbine to run at the maximum speed in order to produce the optimum output in terms of a constant frequency electricity so basically guys uh, this is how a particular uh, governor governs the patent wheel turbine so guys i hope you understood this uh, concept of governing and if you having any doubts any queries please leave a comment and guys please do subscribe to my educational channel engineers academy so guys thank you so much for watching this educational video